Hey heroes, welcome to another insidious episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote in monthly polls that help decide what topics get covered on the channel, you can sign up for $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below along with other places you can find me. Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, is an organization we've mentioned on the channel many times before. With their unique yellow uniforms and propensity towards super science, they have been a presence in the Marvel Universe since the dawn of the Age of Heroes. Their origins are actually tied directly to another infamous subversive group, Hydra. While there are reports of Hydra existing as a secret society as far back as Egypt's Third Dynasty, the modern incarnation was shaped by the notorious Nazi war criminal Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. He has a long history of his own, notably having many encounters with Sergeant Nick Fury and his Howling Commandos during World War II. And in the years following the war, Strucker founded AIM as a division of Hydra dedicated to science. More recent reports have indicated that AIM's founder and first agent was a man named Alvin Tarleton, but it's entirely possible that both men were involved. Tarleton asserted a desire to free the world from the shackles of politics and religion through science, and so I would posit that he shaped the organization while Strucker funded it. As such, it was staffed by brilliant researchers of various disciplines who were instrumental in providing Hydra with advanced weapons and technology. The so-called beekeeper uniforms worn by most AIM staff are actually helmeted radiation suits which protect them during dangerous experiments. Internally, their activities were overseen by a ruling council, the head of which was dubbed the Scientist Supreme. In turn, they reported to a central committee referred to simply as Them, which Baron Strucker presided over as the Grand Imperator. This effectively allowed him to coordinate his various divisions including AIM, the Secret Empire, and Hydra proper. A noteworthy member of Advanced Idea Mechanics was the Italian biochemist Monica Rappaccini. As part of one of her schemes, she implanted the newborn children of several agents with mimetic antibodies. Unaware of their heritage, those children were programmed to report to the nearest AIM biohaven once they turned 16. Monica even performed this on her own daughter, Thassany, who was raised by undercover AIM agents as Carmilla Black. Another important agent of AIM was an unremarkable mathematician named George Tarleton. The son of Alvin Tarleton, the little we know of George's past is fairly ignominious. During his college years, he had a brief relationship with a woman named Linda Madigan, but after learning that Linda was pregnant, he abandoned her and subsequently joined AIM. Around the start of the Marvel Age, AIM performed an experiment to transform one of their own scientists into a mental organism designed only for computing. George Tarleton volunteered for the procedure after being jilted by Monica Rappaccini following a drunken hookup. However, he soon attempted to back out after realizing the enormity of what was happening. Initially, it was reported that this was carried out primarily by the then-scientist supreme Lyle Getz, but more recent reports suggest that George was actually forced into the program by his own father, Alvin, but again, it's entirely possible that both men were involved. In any event, George was transformed into a grotesque, giant-headed mutate with superhuman intellect. His new form also left him reliant on machinery to move, and he was secured to an armored hover chair, which he would later refer to as his doomsday chair. MODOK was then used to perform the delicate calculations necessary for another AIM project, the Cosmic Cube. By siphoning energy from a pocket dimension created by the obscenely powerful Beyonders, AIM scientists created a device capable of altering the very fabric of reality. However, they were soon betrayed by Strucker's villainous ally, the Red Skull, who stole the cube for his own purposes. 
Furthermore, the process of creating the cube had the effect of driving Modok completely insane. He slaughtered AIM's internal leaders, took the rank of Scientist Supreme for himself, and changed his moniker to the mental organism designed only for killing. Three members of the ruling council survived, two of which, George Clinton and Bernard Worrell, escaped death by hiding among the low-ranking scientists. The third was Alvin Tarleton, who also fled the carnage and went under the radar for years. While still under the purview of Baron Strucker, AIM secretly conducted criminal activities as part of the larger organization known collectively as THEM. During that time, Advanced Idea Mechanics publicly presented themselves as a credible weapons manufacturer, with Count Bornag Royale acting as their liaison with the US government. However, they soon ran afoul of Strucker's old enemy, Nick Fury, who by this point was the director of the counterterrorism agency SHIELD. After an attempt on his life by a chemical-based synthoid sent by them, Fury uncovered AIM's ties with known terrorist organizations HYDRA and the Secret Empire. Advanced Idea Mechanics quickly ceased their public operations and covered their tracks by blowing up their own headquarters. This also had the unintended effect of releasing the Adaptoid, an android created from self-programming unstable molecules and a sliver of the Cosmic Cube. After duplicating the abilities of several Avengers, this machine dubbed itself the Super Adaptoid and attempted to destroy Captain America. Mistakenly believing itself successful, it feared that it had outlived its purpose after failing to receive further orders from AIM. Not wishing to be destroyed itself, the Super Adaptoid fled, but AIM continued working on Adaptoid technology. Meanwhile, Nick Fury continued his war against Hydra, resulting in the apparent death of Baron Strucker. Without Strucker, the central committee known as THEM dissolved, and AIM went independent, breaking ties with Hydra and the Secret Empire. MODOK continued to rule AIM for a time, but there were a number of rebellions against him. When MODOK killed Getz and the other leaders, Monica Rappuccini formed a splinter group that remained independent for years. Another group to break away from MODOK's rule did so under the leadership of surviving founders Dr. George Clinton and Bernard Worrell. That faction marked their secession with baby blue uniforms in contrast to the original yellow. Dr. Clinton later met his end after being captured by a trio of Nazis, the Red Skull, Arnim Zola, and the Hatemonger, the latter of which was actually a resurrected Adolf Hitler. Seeking to create another cosmic cube, the Nazis drained Clinton's mind of information but ultimately failed in their efforts. Worrell later made efforts to claim the original cube for himself, but by this point it had begun to develop sentience. It subsequently became the being known as Cubic after leaving the Earth with a much older evolved cube, the Shaper of Worlds. While Cubic originated on Earth, the cube that the Shaper evolved from was created thousands of years prior by the alien Skrulls. Another of MODOK's rivals was Victor Conrad, a scientist who worked for decades to replicate the Super Soldier Serum. After using a version of the formula on himself, he became the supervillain Victorious and clashed with the jungle man Kazar and S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Bobby Morse. He subsequently left AIM and instead took control of the nihilistic Cult of Entropy. While he also made attempts to claim the Cosmic Cube, that eventually led to Conrad's demise. One of his followers, a man named Andrew Forson, would eventually lead an AIM splinter group of his own, but we'll circle back to that later. But in the midst of all of this, after a series of defeats, MODOK was ousted from his position as the head of AIM. But after that, he was able to seize control of their operations on the west coast. With his own forces clad in blue, MODOK attempted to retake AIM's east coast division, sparking a civil war within the organization. Eventually, it seemed like he'd succeeded in regaining control of AIM's yellow forces, only for the blue to turn against him. 
In truth, both sides conspired to unite against Modok and destroy him, although he did escape with his life once again. AIM then mutated a S.H.I.E.L.D. scientist named Kate Waynesboro into a second MODOK to use as a weapon against the first, but she turned against them instead. She did attack MODOK when she witnessed his murderous nature firsthand, but he retaliated by undoing her transformation, restoring her to human form. AIM later hired the newly formed Serpent Society, a group of snake-themed supervillains, to put an end to MODOK once and for all. Despite Captain America's efforts to stop them, the Serpents successfully separated MODOK from his Doomsday Chair and did actually kill him, although AIM retrieved his body and kept it preserved for future use. In the meantime, the scientist supreme of this united aim was a man named Valdemar Tycho. His reign was not a long one, but is noteworthy for his attack on Boca Caliente, an island nation in the Caribbean. AIM apparently had a presence there for some time, as this is the same island where the experiment that created MODOK was carried out. But it was after MODOK's death that AIM overthrew the local government, subjugated the people, and completely conquered the country. This was accomplished with the aid of an orbital weapon that destroyed their airfield and crippled the country's military. Iron Man attempted to stop this and even petitioned his own government to intercede, but the United States refused to act. While Iron Man did succeed in destroying their orbital satellite, he was unable to stop AIM from taking Boca Caliente. The United Nations subsequently recognized Advanced Idea Mechanics as the sovereign rulers of the newly christened AIM Island, affording them diplomatic immunity as heads of state. During that time, Valdemar Tycho competed with his brother, Jorgon, over the role of Scientist Supreme. In his bid for power, Jorgon allied with a woman named Clytemnestra Irwin, who wanted revenge on Iron Man for the death of her own brother. But when Jorgon planned on surrendering during a battle with the armored Avenger, Irwin killed him. She then activated AIM's automatic cannons in an attempt to destroy Iron Man, causing the guns to fire on their own ships. And when a damaged vessel crashed into the building she was in, Irwin lost her life as well. Following the deaths of both Tikio brothers, AIM was represented by their newly appointed chairman, Alessandro Branix. Claiming to have abandoned their designs on world domination, they began hosting conventions on Boca Caliente where they sold weapons to terrorists and supervillains. Of course, they also continued to work on their more subversive projects in secret. Over the years, both before and after this, AIM has also used a series of dummy corporations to conceal their activities. This includes, but is not limited to, Alden's Department Store, International Data Integration Control, Cadence Industries, Target Technologies, the Ardarco Corporation, Omnitech, the Advanced Corporation, Koenig and Stray, and the Tango Corporation. Another of AIM's projects, codenamed Brain Drain, resulted in the creation of Sodom, the specialized organism designed for aggressive maneuvers. This large-brained being is believed to have been mutated from the KGB operative Olinka Barankova, but AIM is known to have falsified records of that sort. Initially, they even fooled Hank Pym into believing that she was created from his first wife, Maria Trovaya. Using the same alteration chamber that created MODOK, AIM then converted Sodom into MODAM, the mobile organism designed for aggressive maneuvers. She was presented by Alessandro Branix at AIM's first weapons expo on Boca Caliente. Unlike her predecessor, MODAM took to her programming and remained loyal to AIM. After a failed attempt to steal Quasar's quantum bands, she was leased to the supposedly feminist terrorist Superia. 
I say supposedly because although she dreamed of creating a society where women were dominant over men, she was also willing to use a biological weapon that would render most of the women on Earth infertile. That plan was thwarted by Captain America and Superior later returned to AIM Island. Despite their earlier working relationship, Superia attempted to assassinate CEO Alessander Branix and usurp Ames resources. Little did she realize Branix could easily survive the hole she blasted through his chest as he was secretly the Super Adaptoid. He also gradually began replacing AIM Island's entire staff with other Adaptoids. I will note that there was at some point a real Branix who the Super Adaptoid replaced, presumably just after he was appointed AIM's chairman. The real Alessandro's sister, Solemn Branix, once aided Nick Fury against AIM, unaware that her brother had been replaced. Sometime later, AIM began attempts to create another cosmic cube, but inadvertently damaged the barriers between the Earth dimension and the realms beyond. Modam was sent in to repair the breach, but disappeared and presumably perished. Her body was allegedly obtained by Hydra at some point thereafter, but the one they had honestly looked more like Modok than Modam. Speaking of which, the Super Adaptoid then used the cosmic energies to resurrect MODOK, hoping that he could repair the hole in reality. Of course, he immediately turned on them in an attempt to seize control of AIM once more. In the end, it was an unnamed Adaptoid who was inspired by humanity's capacity for free will that sacrificed its own life to repair the containment wall and seal the breach once more. Following that whole ordeal, AIM Island was left in ruin and subsequently abandoned. Meanwhile, the Super Adaptoid was rendered inert and turned over to a company called Oracle Inc. for study. MODOK continued his attempts to retain control of AIM after that, but suffered a series of defeats from the likes of Iron Man and Captain America. Another AIM leader around this time was a man named Chet Madden, but he was also captured and brought to trial. In the midst of all of this, AIM continued to splinter with one group serving the Red Skull as AID, Advanced Ideas in Destruction. They eventually evolved into RAID, Radically Advanced Ideas in Destruction. Finally, after years of operating covertly, Monica Rappuccini's AIM faction re-emerged when her plans started coming to fruition. Three years prior, five of the six children who had been implanted with mimetic antibodies activated. Dubbing themselves the Wakers, as opposed to Sleepers, the teens started their training as AIM super agents who could resist any chemical or biological weapon. Ironically, it was Monica's own daughter, Carmilla, who did not succumb to her programming due to a unique mutation. This also endowed her with the ability to excrete powerful toxins from her fingertips, causing her to inadvertently kill her boyfriend when her antibodies activated. While AIM remained fragmented, Monica was declared by many to be the Scientist Supreme and began amassing more power. When a 19-year-old Carmilla discovered her heritage, she allied with S.H.I.E.L.D. and opposed her mother and AIM under the code name Scorpion. Meanwhile, MODOK also had a forgotten teenage child who plotted his downfall, Sean Madigan. But unlike Carmilla, Sean intended on uniting the splintered AIM groups under his own rule. But in the end, it was Monica who killed Sean, seizing about a quarter of AIM's total forces, including MODOK's. Another AIM faction obtained Sean's body and attempted to resurrect him as Headcase, but he hasn't been heard from since. Ousted from AIM once again, MODOK assembled a team of supervillains in an attempt to steal a virtually immeasurable power source called the Hypernova. But one of the villains, the Chameleon, sold him out to Monica, who feared that he would use the Hypernova to create a new cosmic cube. And so the Chameleon in MODOK's crew was actually an upgraded version of the Super Adaptoid controlled by Monica, the Ultra Adaptoid. 
In the end, however, Modok succeeded in obtaining the Hypernova, forcing Monica to buy it from him for one billion dollars. Furthermore, he successfully deduced that the device was unstable, and the Hypernova subsequently exploded. Modok initially believed that he'd killed his rival once and for all, but of course Monica escaped the blast and soon returned. In the meantime, Modok used his riches to rebuild his forces and later joined a group of super intelligent supervillains, the Intelligentsia. During that time, he encountered the kid genius Amadeus Cho, who had been granted the ability to reconfigure the laws of physics within a 10-foot radius by the Cathexis Ray, because that's how that works. Cho used this power to undo the effects of AIM's alteration chamber, changing MODOK back into George Turleton. However, MODOK soon returned in the form of a clone, initially referred to as MODOK Superior. Meanwhile, another AIM splinter group emerged, led by Andrew Forson, who we mentioned earlier as a member of Victor Conrad's Cult of Entropy. His group recruited the former Intelligentsia member, the Wizard, to lead them. And alongside both heroes and villains, they helped the Future Foundation prevent a multiversal council of Reed Richards from instigating a potentially Earth-shattering war. After that, Advanced Idea Mechanics legally purchased another Caribbean island, Barbuda. With Andrew Forson as their ambassador to the UN, they created a new sovereign AIM island. The wizard was also becoming mentally unstable, so the AIM Council elected to make Forson their new Scientist Supreme. As such, he donned a new armored AIM uniform befitting that role. AIM also turned the wizard over to the United States Ambassador, Mr. Fantastic. For a time, MODOK allied himself with S.H.I.E.L.D., hoping to depose Forson. While this failed, AIM was later purchased by the wealthy mutant hero Sunspot. He hired Monica Rappuccini in the hopes of making a smooth transition and using AIM for good. However, she betrayed him and sided with Forson, who wasn't willing to surrender his company or his country. In the end, Forson and Monica were forced to abandon AIM Island, but swore to return. After that, Sunspot rebranded the company to Avengers Idea Mechanics, a global rescue team operating out of Barbuda, now Avengers Island. It later rebranded again, becoming American Intelligence Mechanics after striking a deal with the US government. When Sunspot later stepped down as Supreme Leader of AIM, Dr. Tony Ho was elected to replace him. If you don't know her, she's the daughter of Ho Yinsen, the man who helped Tony Stark build the first Iron Man suit. Meanwhile, Rogue AIM Cells continued their attempts to reclaim the name for Rappuccini or Forsen. Ultimately, Tony decided to just let them have it and rebranded one more time, changing the name of her organization to Rescue. Naturally, Monica scooped up the trademark and Advanced Idea Mechanics was reborn with her as the Scientist Supreme. Following this, she and Forsen succeeded in uniting the various fractured factions under a single board of directors. While MODOK was initially brought into this newly unified AIM, he was almost immediately ousted and has continued to hold enmity with Monica and Forsen. And that's pretty much the history of Advanced Idea Mechanics. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it on your favorite social media. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, then you can let me know in the comments by answering this question. Which AIM leader do you prefer? Monica Rappuccini, Andrew Forson, or even MODOK? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, true believers, Excelsior!